Hey out there survivors, how are you all doing today? Uh, I'd like to welcome you back to another Let's Survive interviews. Today I'm delighted to be joined by another outlaw. We have so many outlaws on this channel, it's incredible. <laughs> we are getting all the outlaws, it's like Pokemon, collecting them all, it's great. <laughs> um, guys, I'm joined today by Mia Davis who played Tilly Jackson in Red Dead Redemption 2. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, Mia, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me, Patty. Of course, thank you for having me. Oh, look, it's honestly my pleasure. I mean, I've gotten to speak to obviously a few, you know, several cast members from this game so far, and it's really fitting because this game has been like easily one of my favorites of the last ten years, hands down. Yeah. So, um, and it's something that I was saying only recently. Ev this is a game where every character is important. There's not just the main character, and you don't care about anybody else every person in that camp you care about what's going to happen to them so yeah i'm just delighted to be Absolutely. getting the chance I'm, I'm delighted to be getting the chance to, to speak to you i mean right out the gate i just want to ask like actually i, I was i have a kind of set of questions but i'm going to flip them around <laughs> what uh <laughs> why not just live in the moment um, <laughs> what 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 was your thought process when you kind of arrived to set and you saw what it was um to be honest and a lot of us have this same sort of story we didn't know what what the hell we were doing um for a while before we were like oh i think i know what i'm doing kind of maybe not really um but my thought process just kind of going into something not completely understanding what was happening kind of having a little bit of back when I say little bit, I mean like <laughs> a, a little bit of backstory about what my character might have been or who she was. Um, but a lot of like the thought that goes into developing a character actually was happening kind of in real time. Yeah. Because, you know, we all sign NDAs, so we don't know a lot of, of anything until we actually get to set and we're doing scenes in the ROM, um, in the soundstage. So it was kind of like, Okay, I'll prepare as much as I can, which is just like memorize my lines, make sure I wake up early to get to the car <laughs> service, like that type of like preparation yeah. of my thought process. And then like further on, further along, I was able to like figure out who Tilly was, her interaction and her relationship with other people in the gang. And then I was able to like really do some work and acting work and be like, okay, I know who my character is and this is what she's gonna say and how she's gonna say it. But in the beginning, for a good, I won't say a year because that's dramatic, but <laughs> for a while, for a while, I had no idea what the heck was going on. And right. I don't play video games. Like before Red Dead, I wasn't, I knew about them, of course. Yeah. I dated people who played them, but like I wasn't, I wasn't playing them. Yeah. So I would, didn't really even know that, that I was in a video game. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> they picked me? <laughs> <laughs> so like that's got to even be it's got to even be kind of scarier to some extent like well like it's got to be kind of weird when they're saying stuff maybe even in the moment like you know during this cutscene this is going to happen a black and you're like I don't know what any of this means <laughs> like I don't play the video terms, games it yeah. really is like its own language that I had to learn on the fly because there's not like you know, a guideline of like, these are yeah. the terms that we'll be using today. And if you hear this, <laughs> this is what this means. I, you know what? They should make a handbook. They should have like a little dictionary. Yeah. They can hire me <laughs> to make the handbook. Um, but no, there was no like, term dictionary for me to know. I just had to like look and use common sense and a little bit of like other type of sense <laughs> that's like gamer sense. <laughs> to figure out what the heck was going on. It it was incredible though. It was it was very fun to kind of be confused but also like know what you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever kind of like pull anyone like um Steve or uh Rob aside who had been in the first game and kind of be like, guys, what is this? What's happening? Yes. <laughs> so they can kind of see you like deer in headlights after a while when people are talking to you, you're just kinda of like and I, I'm sure Steve, Rob, Roger, Kylie, they can all attest to me being kind of like, <laughs> okay, okay, 
Oh, so walk, that means walk over there. Okay, great, thank you. Like they could tell I was really confused. And so they would, in such an endearing way, kind of say like, hey, you wanna go over your scene? Um, you wanna practice or just kind of like get in the groove of things? And they would assist me and like, oh, I think I was right before this uh, scene that you're about to do, this cut scene. Um, I think this is what's going on. If you have a couple of questions, I don't mind asking for you. If you feel nervous, I can ask, you know, our director and stuff like that. It was very much so a team effort to make sure that nobody was left behind in the world that we were creating, but also that we all played our integral part yeah. successfully because we all wanted each other to win and succeed. Because, yeah, it was, it was, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. That's that's so sweet though, like to know that like uh, I mean I've I I'm a filmmaker myself. I've done a couple of small independent films, and like but there is even on that smaller scale there is very much a vibe of like we're all in this together, pick each Absolutely. other up, help each other up. You know, don't let if someone falls you go back for them. You know. Yeah, please. <laughs> that was, I was like, please come back for me. Uh, so you really uh, I've said this to a few of the other uh, guests about this but like you really became a gang of outlaws it sounds like like as in you became yeah. the gang we really uh, yeah and it's so rare it's so rare like you said you've been on other sets and stuff but it's so rare to have the cast actually kind of really like each other yeah <laughs> and like want to help each other and really want to help because they want to be helpful and not like oh, I want to help you so I can see where you're lacking and where your weaknesses are, and then I'll pray on that later. It was like, no, I want to help you because it looks like you're struggling, and I know you're going to be upset that no one helped you, and we have the tools to do that. It was really a family effort. That's literally. amazing. That's yeah. so cool. And as you say, like, you walk into this giant room, there's t cameras everywhere, they stick a camera on your face, and have you just kind of <laughs> parade it's around. everywhere. There is, there is, and... And there and people I think fans have to like when we're on a set, any set, there's a lot of other people there. There's a lot of moving parts. There's yeah. a lot there's people that actors don't even have to interact with that have major roles in their job, right? So mm. even being on set for Rockstar, there's a lot of people where we are. Um, we only interact and actually communicate with the director and and um, maybe one of the writers or something like that. But we weren't talking to like everyone else that works mm. for Rockstar that is actually probably looking at our our character on a screen and like doing something with them. You know what I mean? Like they yeah, know yeah, like the animators and, and all those really guys. Don't even know them. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was so amazing because people would be like, "Hey, Mia," and I'm like, yeah. "Hi." <laughs> <laughs> But as you say, they're all heroes, like everybody that, that got it from A to oh. Z. <laughs> everybody. Everybody. And they were so nice. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> it's so rare that you get everybody being nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's truly, truly a blessing. Really a blessing. Because everyone was nice. Even if you didn't know their name, they knew why you didn't know. And it wasn't because the actor was trying to be, you know, pompous. Yeah. It was really, I don't know, but I'll, sh I'll extend grace to say like, hi, my name is, I do this, that's why I know who you are. Yeah. And it was just like a, a beautiful community and a plethora of colors and, and, and creative people. And it was just, it was, it, were, it really was a family dynamic, yeah. That's, that's honestly, this is the stuff I live for. Um, and I, I guess, uh, Kind of leading off of that, as you said, you didn't kind of know Tilly right out the gate, but kind of once you started to dig your claws in and get a feel for Tilly, like, how did you, how did you feel about her once you knew more about her? Like, were you like, I so get this character, I'm here for it, like, or, you know, or did it yeah. take you a bit longer? Uh, no, um, I can say, um, there's, there's, uh, Sometimes when um, you re-record something um, on set and then let's say the voiceover for it, the body work is done, right? Mm. You've done it, you know, um, mocap, that's fine. But the voice for it is giving a different intention that maybe after a couple of years of doing it, you're kind of like, she's different. You know, mm. what I was doing in the beginning is not where she is now. And so yeah. it doesn't add up. Um, 
And so I can say that in the beginning, I think I was making Tilly, and Tilly is sweet. Yeah. But I, I hadn't, I hadn't um, tapped into her strength just yet because those meteor scenes, cut scenes hadn't been, they hadn't yeah. come to me yet. Um, and so it was more so of like the the walk and talks with Arthur and things like that, you know, and yeah. um, just like the stuff like that. It was more so light and 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 gentle and a little airy and you know ethereal. Mm. But like after a while, I tapped into Tilly's strength and her mm. her toughness that didn't make her callous or hard. Exactly, but it made her more um, relatable to people and less judgmental. And um, I think it just, she added such a great bonus coming from that specific kind of emotional capacity, which yeah. isn't just, I'm a gentle and, and I'm and I'm meek, which she is, but like meekness and it means, and then it goes into like, I'm also very weak and like frail. Yeah. And it was like, no, like no, I, she's I a badass. around yeah. here. Yeah, she's a badass. I help around here. I tell Arthur about himself sometimes. I also don't like Miss Grimshaw. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. she can get these hands as well. But it was, <laughs> I definitely <laughs> tapped into Tilly's strength. And That's... I hadn't, I didn't have that in the beginning. In the beginning. It's amazing because like, there's one or two moments that I think of when I think of like, Tilly as a strong character. And one of them is like, you know, she's, she's the first person to feel sorry for leaving Molly behind when they're going on this thing. But then when, I won't say specifically, but then when what happens to Molly happens, she's the first person to be like, got what she deserved, I'm sorry. You know, like she's, and as you say, it's not cold, it's not callous, it's it's real. It's just, it's just the way you gotta be in these it's, times. Yeah, yeah, she, uh, I think Tilly is a definite believer in, um, justified karma yes yep <laughs> you know and we'll leave it at that because we don't want to say <laughs> yeah yeah true exactly <laughs> but no she is she's she's a she's a character that like i think i know exactly what you mean when you first meet her you st you do think she's very she's she's soft but then as it goes on you realize her strength and something that i like again without getting too much into it either but like where Tilly ends up, and I'm not gonna, as I say, give too much away, but like, it's it's nice. It's 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 a beautiful moment when you kind of, when you meet Tilly again, and it's it's just, I just remember having a smile from ear to ear, just being like, this is so nice. This is what I wanted to happen. There's so few happy endings it, in Red it Dead. It definitely <laughs> was earned. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, she and as you say, right, the, the dynamic between her and Miss Grimshaw is an interesting one because like you say, they they are like um your your I don't know, like your angry aunt or something. Like, yeah. Yes, yes. She's she's the she's the aunt that is like mean just all the time like on every holiday, like she has an attitude, <laughs> like why did you even come if you don't want to be here type of lady? And but then, you know, she's the one that like you talking to your younger cousin about something that you really want and like it's under the tree and she got it for you you know what i mean like she's also like very yeah. caring but it's just like you don't have to hit me before you can give me a present like just give me the present yeah <laughs> no i get you because i even i think i said it to kylie when i had her on that like there was a moment where miss grimshaw says something to to tilly about like you become such a, a wonderful young woman or something and just after everything you've seen these kind of women go through and it me and Kylie talked about this, but like Miss Grimshaw seems like the type of character who's very hard on on other women. Um, yeah. It feels like Tilly has done something that none of the other women have managed to do, which is like get her respect or get enough to to actually hear it from her mouth. You know? <laughs> yeah, she does. She does, and I just it. Yeah, she does, and I think give it away <laughs> <laughs> well look if you want we can put a spoiler uh, warning in here i've done that on loads of them already <laughs> like i think yeah, rob, rob and me right would, yeah spoilers Just fast forward three minutes if you want <laughs> um, <laughs> um so when uh when um they come to save me when one of the former yes. brothers took me i think that moment for susan and tilly 
the fact that Susan didn't have Tilly anymore and the reality of, wow, she might be gone forever. Yeah. If we don't get her, she's gone forever. And how that rocked her and her urgency to even tell Arthur, like, we got to go. Let's go. Yeah. And then when we they get there to save me, she can see how strong I still am. You know yeah. what I mean? When she's like, where is he? Where did he go? And I was like, he went back there. Like, and when you bring him back, bring his ass to me. Because yeah. I got something for him. You know what I mean? And it was just yeah. like, I think Susan saw like, oh, wait, I've taught her, you know, to be strong. And, and she has taken some attributes that are positive, which is Susan's strength and her, like, no BS. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Does not play. And I I can, when I was shooting that scene, I felt, you know, the, the strength of the women in the camp. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we're not, um, we're not uh, uh, treated gently. And no. as much as that bothered me at some point, I honestly liked it because it made it equal. You know, exactly. we were was, all on the same playing field. I was going to say that. that, that that is one thing about this game that I truly do love is that, you know, there is that feeling that when you're in this gang of outlaws, it doesn't matter what, you know, gender you are, what race you are, what creed you are. You're just a, you're just a member of the gang. That's all that matters. And your family, your family, yeah. and you do anything for family. You. You bust your family's chops all the time, but then if exactly. somebody threatens them, you'll kill them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I think it was just uh, even even you know in in the the game you can choose if you want to kill him or let him run mm. free, Anthony Foreman. Um, and when they ask, you know, the player gets to choose that. But when it's asked of me, what do I want him to do? And I say, you know, like let him go and yeah. tell everybody else don't come back around here no more for yeah. me and mine <laughs> yeah. and i just felt like susan was like looking at Tilly, like damn Tilly, okay <laughs> i agree i agree oh sorry about that sorry <laughs> you're all good you're back <laughs> Technical difficulties, beep. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's funny though, because when Tilly does say that she doesn't want you to, to kill Anthony Foreman, I, it's funny because like that stuff, in my opinion, for me, helps me make a choice because if there was nobody saying that, I probably would have absolutely just killed him. I would have been like, it's a video game, there's no consequence. Just kill the dude. <laughs> He's a scumbag, he deserves it. But when you have somebody kind of going, no, don't, and like that, you know, then you kind of go, oh, there's like a moral obligation here to not be a horrible, horrible douchebag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is a good thing, but like it does show you, as you say, it shows you that like there's strength in, in being willing to let go as well and not just taking oh, it. Yes. You know, of all the outlaws, it seems like Tilly is the one who really gets that, whereas everybody else always has to take it to like 11. <laughs> yeah. you know, murder pa, pa, like oh my god <laughs> but, but um, I, no but Tilly I have my gun ready I had, <laughs> I had it ready I had it ready I had it ready I clocked that <laughs> <laughs> you you were you were just waiting for the moment for it um, but even kidding. when she, when Tilly saves Jack as well that's another great yeah. I won't go into too much about the scene but like Tilly saves Jack and it's again shows tremendous strength of character like just the ability to kind of to keep a cool head in that situation and, and mm -hmm. focus on no we got to get this this kid out of here that's yeah, like yeah. another another thing about her character that you just really warm to you know yeah her fearlessness that she she gathered along like along the ride you know yeah and you really saw that blossom I think in all the characters really I really feel like we all kind of our confidence by the end, our confidence, depending on what happened to you, but yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the end, our, our our confidence in who we were as characters had kind of blossomed in its own form. Mm. And sometimes confidence was cockiness, um, yeah. you know, for some characters, but I, I definitely loved, love, love, love the evolution that they gave our characters. It really is, is great to watch and play, yeah. 
And I think it comes from the fact that like in other games, there's just these random cutscenes that happen in the game, just like as you're moving along a story. But in Red Dead, what made it so unique, Red Dead 2 in particular, is that you could just walk around camp and talk to people. And I did, like I wanted to know everybody's story. I wanted to know where they came from, who yeah. they were. And you could literally go out on little missions with those people and get to know a bit more about them. And that's why, as I say, from start to finish, you grow to love like, almost all the outlaws like there's one or two yeah. that don't quite get your <laughs> affection <laughs> micah <laughs> the damn rat <laughs> let me just say peter <laughs> this is the funniest man alive people have got to know that that man cracks me up <laughs> so him being micah on days that we had to shoot together the hardest I've ever had not like tried not to laugh no he way. is hilarious yeah I need to because everybody's told me as well that he is like the nicest person ever and it's just so funny because his character is so that's how you know he's a good actor funny. you know he's so funny <laughs> he's the greatest he's really funny he's he's funny sorry he's oh, no. <laughs> I, yeah he seems amazing but one of the things, I guess, I mean, you kind of touched on this already, but was it was it important to you? Obviously, with something like this, you don't necessarily have control over the story or your character. You can bring what you can as an actor, but you, within limitations. But was it when you kind of when you kind of saw what was happening with Tilly that she was getting that strength? Was that really important to you? Did that add a lot to like? Were you kind of like, as you say, you started out sweet, and was it kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, thank God, it's going this direction. Thank God, I get to. To show yeah. that Tilly got teeth, you know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. Tilly's fangs came in and she was ready to bite. Yeah. But like, I felt like, and I think, and I talk about this with Kylie and Sam and Joe um, mm. all the time, but we always say as, um, as for the women in the game, we, we came in with a different perspective based on uh, the writing that we had in the beginning and just kind of like what was going on in different scenes that we were shooting. And mm. we all truly believe that as, as Rockstar and the creators and animators got to know us as people and just our normal, regular attributes, I think they really found the beauty in like putting that into our characters mm. to make them as lively as possible, as, as true to us as possible. Yeah. And, and not, us not having to act <laughs> but really just put on the skin of somebody else and it kind of fits, but it kind of doesn't, you know? Yeah, I get um, you. I, I definitely think Rockstar was like, yeah, this is just, mind you, this is not, this may not be facts at all. But <laughs> I think, I think that they were like, you know what, me is fearless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> He's really compassionate. <laughs> that's, that is what I think happened in the writer's room. Totally fair. <laughs> well, I mean, like, they basically, I mean, I, I, I would believe it because when you look at Sean, they, he's just Mick, like, they're just... <laughs> a great example of somebody who's just their Mick. character. He's great. I know, right? Mick, all day. <laughs> it was great getting to chat to Mick because obviously him being Irish as well and not a his character was not really a stereotype of Irish people and that's something that kind of I, I would like to ask you about is I mean one of the great things I feel with Tilly as well is she's not when you think of westerns and you think of how people of color were portrayed in westerns like it's great that Tilly was not you know in any way a stereotype in any way generic she was a yes. fully fleshed out character you know um yes. And I again, definitely uh, appreciated that yeah. from Rockstar. Uh, you know, because, I mean, just as a Black woman in America right now, it's a lot going on. But um, yep. but uh, I, I know as an artist, I don't always want to have to tell those, um, you know, the stories that are in our history books all the time. Mm. I want to tell the stories and the feelings of the people that we don't hear about that aren't in the history books, exactly. you know, of an overcomer of yeah. somebody who had a parent and, and Tilly's parent was a slave. My mom yeah. was a slave, but you don't see, see Tilly as a product of that history. You exactly. see Tilly as a member in a predominantly white and Caucasian environment. Mm. Um, 
uh, with with Lynn to Le- to Lenny, but you don't see a lot of her. Yeah. And and I really appreciated that they gave her as much as I think that they could in the realm of the story and of the world and of the time that mm. they gave her independence and they didn't yeah. give her servitude. Exactly. Um, but they gave her a voice and she could yeah. speak to the white man, which is yeah. Arthur Morgan. You know what I mean? And, and she could call directly him to him. Exactly. Yeah. And there wasn't any anything on it. It was just what it was. And I yeah. really think that they did a wonderful job with that. I would have loved to see more people of color in the game, and I yeah. think it could have, it would have served. Um, but you know, it, it, it's a it's a definite like transitional thing, and I think that there is room for more women in games and also Definitely. black people in games. And I think that's I think this game in particular, and Tilly in particular. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of black girl gamers on Twitter yeah. and Instagram and. And they love to see Tilly on the screen because she is them and we exactly. are each other, you know? And yeah. I love that. I really did love that. Like, yeah, re- like people, that's, I think what a lot of would say, what a lot of people don't get about that is how important representation is. Like how important somebody, seeing somebody that looks l- like them and how important that is to, as you say, kids, whatever, you know, I remember yeah. telling my daughter that the new Little Mermaid was going to be uh, black. And she yeah. was like, that's so cool. Like, even though she's, yes. she's not, she was like, that's so cool. Cause other little girls can be like, I'm Ariel. And I was like, yes. exactly. Yes. And I was like, I've d- yes. okay, I'm happy with what I've done as a parent. <laughs> there we go you know um but as you say it's an evolution it's 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 great to see things happening characters like tilly are the step forward but as you say it can definitely grow and expand there should be more lead characters in games that are people call her you know and i get the fear i get the fear you know what i mean but fear only begets more fear so if you don't want to do it then the next generation isn't going to want to do it either because they're afraid well my people were my ancestors were afraid so i don't want to do it either because that didn't seem like the right thing to do, but it's like, there's such a, there, and and I think people in gaming world don't understand, there is a huge black community of gamers. Oh yeah, big time. You know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. we, they want to see them. They play these games that don't yeah. look like them. Yeah, and they're exactly. Good at, and they love it, but like, they want to have that world too. And I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, and I'm I'm just yeah. thankful that it was me to be Tilly. That's a, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, but it, it it's so true though because I've noticed that like I did a I did a news episode a while back, and I did I, I highlighted the work of all uh, black developers, and it was great because what I've started to see as well is that there's a lot of um, black developers out there that are saying, well, you know what? If you're not gonna if you're not gonna create the spaces for us to tell stories, we'll just do it ourselves, which is again. Like that's sometimes the best way forward is you know what yeah. you're not gonna do it. we'll do it it's fine we'll take control yeah. of this situation yeah yeah <laughs> um, yeah yeah <laughs> um, but as you say it's great to see that kind of that progress uh, moving forward um, so uh, you worked on the game I imagine for similar to the other people involved about seven years I think I worked on it about three and a half okay three and a half yeah, yeah. three and a half. Okay, because yeah, it's it's just when I hear that, but was that like three and a half consecutively or three and a half over longer? I- no, it was it it was. Well, I'll say this: I I twenty fourteen to about when the game came out twenty eighteen, twenty eighteen, right? Um, on and off yeah. that whole time. Um, okay, but it wasn't it wasn't a con- I mean, some days were consecutive and some days weren't. It just depended on the shooting style and the shooting yeah. schedule, mm-hmm. and. Yeah. Personal schedules because we all have lives. I was pregnant. I shot pregnant. Oh, I was what? not pregnant. I was not <laughs> pregnant when I began, and by the time we were done, I had a one-year-old. And I was like, "Wait, what happened? Who who did this?" <laughs> That's I suppose the joy of shooting something like this, where it's mocap, is that uh, you don't have to worry about oh well, you know what are we gonna do about this or whatever. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, in some of, the, I think in some of the scenes, though, you can see me, I can see myself, I'm just self-conscious, I can see myself waddling a little bit. Okay. I think it was towards the end of the pregnancy where baby boy was sitting kind of low. Yeah. Um, and I can see myself kind of like, hey, Arthur, you know what I mean? Like, 
this, this reminds me of Rob saying that, like, he was telling me a story that when he played Red Dead 1, he was like, why did they make him run like that? And then he was like, oh, wait, I run like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Which has got to be a weird feeling. Like, well, actually, there's a question for you. Was it weird, like, that moment where, I don't know how much you saw during the shooting of it, like, what, you know, what kind of rushes you were allowed to see of, you know, but, like, when you actually saw it all come together and saw, like, the game being played and saw your character, what was that experience like? I literally was like, wow, that's my face in a video game form it's literally my face yeah and i i think it's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but it's funny because i think you're one of <laughs> my face is floating all over the world like... <laughs> exactly that's pretty amazing. Like, I think it's, there's only a handful of characters that are actually, the facial capture is, yeah. like you and probably Peter are the two that spring to mind. Yeah. Because um, um, obviously Susan doesn't look like Kylie. No. <laughs> you know, no. uh, Rob says he doesn't look like John, but I see a bit of, <laughs> I see a I bit see of Rob weed off of John. Of John. <laughs> um, uh, Roger. Dutch, ben Ben kind of looks like Dutch. Yeah. But not really. And Roger kind of looks like Arthur. Yeah. They, have, they all have like things. Little about bits. Them, but I think, yeah. 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 I think. I think my face and 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 Peter's face is the most. The that, most that significant. Yeah. Literally look like the people that they are. It's yeah. I mean, uh, that's got to be, as I say, like, I mean, I remember the first time that we ever made like a, a stupid little short film when I started out making films and we yeah. showed it in a the theater back here and seeing like I, I wasn't even supposed to be in it. But then I ended up having to do a part because one of the actors kept backing out. So I was like, OK, well, I'll just jump in and do it. And then seeing my face up on screen, I remember not being an actor. I remember being like, oh, my God, I can't handle this. I can't. I can't look at myself. So to imagine that as like, as you say, a digital version of you, it's got to be. At, at first, I was like, oh, wow, my face. That's so cool. And then I was like, wait a second. Do they really just not want to draw my face? Like. You guys can create anything. You know, I'm joking. I'm joking, Rockstar. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I love that. Um, so, you've obviously done, uh, like, I, I had a look, uh, as I always do, I do the quick IMDb check before I, I do anything. And I saw, you know, you've done, um, you've done obviously other work as well outside of Red Dead. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you got to be in an episode of Orange is the New Black, which that's got to have been. And amazing. I mean, that's again a cultural phenomenon. Show just being any way involved in it, it's got to be an amazing experience. Yeah, and it was it was uh, the last season, so like the I got in right before they shut the door yeah. forever. And you know, Orange Is the New Black has been on for well, it's on for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, wait, I got in an episode, and I'm on the last episode of the last season. <gasps> Oh my god. So like we've exactly. seen you in that show because me and my wife were obsessed with that show. Like um, so like you know, without knowing it at the time, we obviously were, yeah. were watching you in that show. Yeah. Um, it was great. It was great. It was a great uh it was a great sh it's just like a female led show. Yeah. Yes. I'm so happy to be a part of this. I'm so happy to just have this in my back pocket as something that I worked on. And like being on set and working with everyone there was great. And um, and to be on something coming from uh, Red Dead, where we're creating kind of the baby of it, you know, and just yeah. like growing it together, to then go to Orange Is the New Black and it be like, you know, by that by the time I'm on is the end. They've it's created all, this family. Yeah. They've created whatever, but still to be welcomed into a community of a project that people are passionate about and want to like do the best. Um, I, I love that. I really did love the different dynamics of me being um, a guest star versus yeah. a, you know, a principal starring in another show or something like that. So it was, it was a nice experience. I really enjoyed myself. That's so cool. Like, I think, as you say, just having that as something in your, in your arsenal is like incredible. Um, yeah. As I say, and, like, it's... 
in Orange is the New Black, I'm playing. I mean, people can watch it. It's not a spoiler. But <laughs> I, I'm like, Tilly is not anything what I'm doing in Orange is the New Black. I'm literally playing like a heroin addict. <laughs> oh, wow. Big departure, yeah. <laughs> people have to watch it. It's really good. Yeah. I need to re-watch <laughs> that last episode now and just be like, watch it. Like, yeah, I, I got to see Mia yeah. here. Um, I'm, I'm opposite Black Cindy in her oh, last wow. scene, opposite Black Cindy. Mm-hmm. Like, again, there's a show, though, that, like, again, brilliant cultural diversity in that show as well. Like, all the characters, there's no stereotypes, really. They're all very much, like, fully fleshed out motivations. Yeah. And, like, the people that, the people that they might try and push you as, like, these are the nice people or these are the people that you see yourself in the mirror is. Sometimes they're the most despicable ones. And you're like, Exactly, oh. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's that's amazing. Um I mean, is there any other projects that you've done that you're like super, uh, obviously alongside Red Dead and Orange is New Black, that you're super proud of, that you're super to, happy to have been involved um, in? There, uh, there was a project that I did. It was a film that went to Sundance and it's actually on Hulu and I think Amazon Prime. It's called Premature. Okay. Um, and and it went to Sundance. It did great at Sundance, but it's, it's, a, it's a film that I really, I don't have a major role in it at all, but I was just, I loved the storyline so yeah. much. It's a it's a it's a uh, movie about a young black couple. Um, one is fresh out of high school, and the guy is kind of like in his early twenties. But it's a Harlem love story, summertime, yeah. and just like nostalgia and all those type of feelings. So I was like, oh my god, this is so great. Yeah. Um, and then recently, I actually, right before quarantine happened and Corona hit. Um, yeah. I had just wrapped a, um, a horror film or scary movie. <gasps> yeah, that's what I made. Um, called, <laughs> yeah, called No Fear. Uh, no Fear. Um, there we go. K N O W Fear. And yeah. um, and I just went to. I drove with my family five hours into Pennsylvania, um, into like the middle of like a mountain city, like a little mountain oh, town. Fun. And they had it playing at a drive-in theater because it's, oh, you know, Corona. So and that's the theater that picked it up. So I got to see it. And it actually was really good. It's my first horror film. It's my yeah. first scary movie. And I'm, I'm kind of good, I'm good scared. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> how did I believe myself? I okay. surprised myself. But it's called No Fear. I don't know when it's going to be out, out yeah. yet. I just know they had a small showing, a small premiere. Um, but hopefully, I'm hoping that everyone will be able to see it soon. Yes, yeah, well, it. fingers crossed for you too, because like I'm in a similar boat with with my movie came out April seventh in the US, um, right at the start of lockdown, and it was kind of like I was meant to be in LA for the premiere, all that stuff, and then it all oh went down, gosh. and I just had to like. That's what this channel was like created from, was like, I need to do something and just keep my mind occupied because I'm going to yeah. go crazy if I don't. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> but uh, like that, I'm the same where like people keep asking me, where can I see your movie? Where can I see your movie? And I'm like, well, if you're not in the US, you just got to wait till I tell you when it's available. Yeah. I don't know either, <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we just don't know what's going on. Um, and, but there's still things being done and, and yeah. you know, shot and filmed. We just don't know kind of how it's going to be yet. Which yeah, is so exactly. uncertain. You know, as an artist, as a creative, you're just like, wait, I create so that way people can feel my creation. But yeah. the people aren't around to feel my creation. So I'm creating, but it's like, it's like ammo sitting there, you know, fireworks yes, waiting on to be off for 4th of July. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's so true. I mean, again, I'm the, another reason the channel was born was, well, as a filmmaker through lockdown, there wasn't, anything I could I could make a bunch of quarantine films I guess but I didn't feel like I wanted to I was like the last thing I want to do now is try to push myself to do anything like that I'm just gonna do something else that I enjoy and then when the and now as we've gone on now the ideas are coming back and I'm coming up with oh, okay I've got a funny idea I'm gonna pitch this and I'm gonna try that and whatever you know but it's 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 been an interesting time because I think a lot of people have found I found, yes, it's been awful for people. It's been so terrible. I never want to take that away from anybody. But I think yeah. some people have found those bright spots of like, well, I learned this about myself or I oh, discovered yes. that, yes. you know. Yes, yes. I I discovered I have many talents. I, I didn't, you know, I, I knew I was like, I'm a creative. So, you know, I, I do things. Yeah. But like, I never honed in on those things. I'm really good with my hands. Um, I, I actually started like, 
braiding for black women braiding your hair is a really kind of um spiritual uh, thing that happens as well because you're allowing another person to touch your crown and we really yeah. are sensitive about our hair um because it is sensitive but i started like braiding hair like what what is this and like yeah. just doing it i'm like cooking like gourmet meals i'm like what is this <laughs> Yeah, once once takeout was gone, it was like, well, that was the case for me. It was like, okay, takeout. We're not getting takeout. Let's uh, let's actually remember. I'm like how we chefing cook. it up, like tossing <laughs> stuff in the air, and like, oh, there's a little bit more salt, you know. <laughs> That's as you say. We're all I think, yeah. Salt bay. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's it's good, as I say, in spite of all the. The, the many things you know that are that are awful about this it is good to try to remember that there are that people are finding their ways through this and navigating yeah. it yeah um, yeah for sure and taking you know a much needed pause um like you said yes. people definitely have had you know uh death and and just yeah hardships happen during this time um but those other people that were going, you know, not taking the time to heal from things, from traumas and stuff like that, I think this kind of just like stop. Everybody yeah. got some work to do. Yes, we exactly. We all need to do the work, okay? And then we'll get better and we'll get back. But right now, I need the world to stop, okay? Yeah. And I really, I really felt like, even though it was a shocker and just kind of like, whoa, 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 what do you mean we can't do and everything stopped? What do you mean Broadway shut down till 2022? Like what? Yeah. Um, it 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 was like yeah, but what what is, what else fulfills me? You know, exactly. what else makes me happy? If I'm not booking something, I should be happy regardless, right? So mm. what else is that? And I definitely appreciate the time that I had. It just with being with my son more often. Yeah, that's you know a what big I mean. It, having him around and just like being with him and showing him things. We potty trained. He was potty, like, I, I, I feel very <laughs> proud. You should. Obviously, I feel very proud. <laughs> yeah. I trained my son. You know what I mean? It was just, it was, you know, just us spending time together was a thing that is not going to happen again. Yeah. Um, prayerfully like this. But, uh, you know, just where it's like, mommy doesn't have to be anywhere. Yeah. I can just be here with you. Yeah, You know exactly. That it, it, was really, really nice to have. Yeah, it is. It's definitely one of those things where it, it, it allowed you to take stock on, on the important things. And then, as you said, learn new skills about your, learn new skills, learn new things about yourself. As you say, obviously, I don't want this situation to, to as you said, happen again or whatever. But like, I do think that every so often I've, I've now maybe put a note in my head going, you know, maybe once every couple of years, you should just put pause on everything for like a month yeah. or something and just reevaluate everything just check check yourself <laughs> you know what i mean yeah absolutely but yeah it, it is it's 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 a very surreal time and and uh interesting time but as i say one of the one of the things that i've taken that i love about it is getting to meet people like you getting to to i, I mean steve has been huge for that for for helping me um do this like he really yeah, is Steve's a, great I don't think I've given him a proper shout out for that on any episode today. And I think I've always just kind of been like, Steve, oh, so, yeah. you are a connector of people. <laughs> he you is. Are matchmaker. A man, a matchmaker. He is um, just very generous. You know what I mean? He's incredible. He's very, he, he's helpful. He's, you know, I love Steve. Steve is like, he's, he's nothing Steve. like Bill Williamson. Like that's it. Of all the characters, again, he's of nothing. Of all the characters. <laughs> Yeah, like so good. He does them so good. I know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, here, Mia. I I know that. I, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up, um, because I think we've got we've got, we've we've both got smallies to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Parenting is calling us, Patty. <laughs> That's the one. Parenting is calling us. But I uh, I have to say I did have an absolute blast with this. I loved, as I say, I loved your character. I felt like. I, I'm being a writer and stuff myself. I always want to see stories being told that don't marginalize or create stereotypes or you know a, around people. And so for me, characters like like Tilly and Charles and and Lenny and Javier, all these characters that like aren't your traditional stereotypes 
to me it was so important to see their stories being told and like congrats to you for breathing life into that character and bringing her to life in such a amazing way thank you so much thank you so much that means a lot it really does i love that she still is people are still discovering us as a game and yeah. being inspired and being changed and i think that's great absolutely and it will it's the type of game that has been such a cultural phenomenon it will continue to change people's perspectives lives for for many years to come i reckon um yeah until they, they hopefully decide to do another one. That's all I keep hoping for. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. The people want Tilly. Yeah, bring back Tilly. <laughs> Hashtag bring back Tilly. <laughs> uh, Mia, thank you so much. Guys, I'm going to say what I, I usually say here, which is um, if you check the descri uh, links in the description, you'll be able to find out where to follow Mia. There we go. Inverted camera with this way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where to follow uh, Mia and uh, also if you can hit the like button if you enjoyed this hit the subscribe button if you want to stick around because I can tell you we've already got more Outlaw interviews coming uh, you can check out the whole Outlaw sessions with like everyone we've interviewed so far so that's that's hella fun um, and yeah uh, one last time Mia thank you for your time and thank you for your performance Thank you, Patty. Subscribe, guys. Subscribe. <laughs> You're the best. And guys, I'll say what I always say to close this out. Let's survive together and peace out. <laughs>